Hey guys, welcome to Define the Drive, a uh, new vlog of course. Um, it's currently four degrees outside, it's really, really cold. I uh, really should be investing in some winter tyres, but I don't feel it's the right time yet. Um, so today's video is going to be about five things that I hate or dislike about this car. So one of the first, well the first one basically is its dated interior. I mean the car came out originally in 2006, that's a good 10 years now. Um, I mean, you know, the materials don't age, they're really nice leather, hard plastics, they don't feel cheap, uh, aluminium here and there, so they're not, they're not dated materials, it's just the design, they've dated the sat-nav, although being good you can just see that it's compared to the, let's say Garmin's, TomToms, all the latest sat -nav, it's so much far further behind. Um, steering wheel is nice though, and, I mean still newer models are still using it, um, the same steering wheel design. Um, vents, well pretty much everything else is pretty standard um, and pretty similar to much newer cars. Well then that, on to the second point. So anyone who's owned a TT, TTS, TTRS will know that fuel consumption is quite a lot. Not as much as a supercar, um, but closer to your Porsche Cayman, um, one in like 2013 or something. Don't know exactly, but um, I know that it's about the same. Um, but really, I see myself pretty much if I'm doing. I don't know, um, 100 miles a week, say, uh, which I pretty much do every few days, actually. Um, you're looking at about a £60 for a full tank. Um, that's using V-Power or any 98 plus octane. Um, I don't know what it is in different countries, but that's in the UK. This is in the UK, anyway. Um, but MPG uh, going around is normally about 28 Um when you're on the dual carriageway on motorway, it's about 31, which is actually pretty decent. And I know on the newer uh, TT series, with the newer engines, it's a lot more economical as well. And something, which is the third point, something that really irritates me compared to the new ones and other models made by Audi, is that this doesn't have selectable drive mode. Now for me, that's a real irritation. Mainly because if you want to engage the sport mode, you press the mag right suspension button and that basically is the sport button but you can't turn off the magnetic hard, harsh ride. Um, so you're kind of going around, although with a nice sounding exhaust, uh, refined throttle response and everything else, you've just got a really tough, you know, ride. It's not nice. Uh, so I wish I could turn that off. Um, and then just keep everything else, which obviously you can do on the new ones and on other models already. And something else, but I think this is played by all Audis at some point, is the fiddly menus. Definitely with the little knob that you turn and then all the buttons to get places. And then, well, especially on this sat-nav, um, you can't write the letters with your finger down here. So you are turning it, click, just for, just for each letter, and it takes forever. Absolutely takes forever. And then going through the uh, instrument cluster menu, that's a bit of a faff. I've got used to it now, so it's not too bad. Um, but, you know, I just rather have everything which you can just swipe through easily without pressing tons and tons and tons of buttons. That being said, it isn't as cluttered in here as some other cars, and even comparing that to newer cars, and my final, my final hate, which just can't, uh, I mean, I knew this when I got the car, but you know, it's only now that it's a, a huge pain. And that is connectivity. There's no USB in here. Um, you can get Bluetooth, but that's only because I have, even Audi are recommending it, is the Tune2 Air um, dongle, which I'll put in the description. And you basically connect that to the Audi MMI or Multimedia Interface port. Um, and it'll work for 
There's a one dedicated to Audi now. Um, there's one for both Mercedes and I think General Volkswagen and maybe BMW as well. But um, it uses that sort of iPod port, you know, traditional iPod connector from about five years ago. Um, but then, yeah, I mean, I can connect to Bluetooth. I can't see what track I'm listening to. It just says next and previous, which is quite irritating. Um, and then connectivity-wise, you've got, you've got no USB. You do have, what is it, two micro SD card slots, which actually do work quite well. Um, and then obviously you've got the DVD, the DVD CD drive. Um, but then the only thing with that is that the sat nav has a disc in there, so it's not actually installed onto the system, which is quite weird. Um, but other than that, um, I don't think there's much I dislike about this car. I mean, I was um, just standing outside and a few of the shots that you would have seen. It actually looks really nice in this light. Um, and, the, you know, the bodywork, the colour just pops. It's really nice colour. Um, it's almost like chrome in some lights. Um, but anyway, stay tuned for my next video, which will be five things I love about this car. Anyway, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, rate, whatever. Go on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, it'll be there. Thanks for watching, guys. See ya.